So we also have conditional statements, and these are, are typically referred to as if-then statements. So if something, then I will do something else. So here in a conditional statement, let's, let's pretend this is our starting point, which says, if it is snowing, then I will stay home. Well, when is this true? That's what we're saying. When is this a true or correct statement? And that's, that's tough to, I think, wrap your head around because um, at first glance, you're like, well, you're saying it, right? You're saying, if it's snowing, then I will stay home. Well, isn't that a true thing to say? Well, let's consider the different scenarios. In scenario number one, if it is snowing, and I am staying home, right? So they're both true, true, and then another true. And this is the symbol for conditional, an arrow to the right. That's our symbol right there. So if it's actually snowing and I'm actually staying home, then this was a true statement. In other words, I'm following through, right? I'm actually staying home when it snows. What about if it's snowing, but then the second statement is false, which means that I'm not staying home. Right, so we're assuming that these are our starting points and these are both true. So not staying home is false. You actually went out of the house. Well, if that's the case, if it's snowing, if it's actually snowing and you didn't stay home, then this statement, which you originally said, is not correct. When you actually leave the house, when you say you wouldn't, you're kind of breaking your word. It's a false statement. What if we reverse it, though? What if it's not snowing out? Well, we don't know what you're going to do when it's not snowing. We only know that if it is snowing, you'll stay home. If it's not snowing, you might still stay home because of other reasons. If it's not snowing, you might go somewhere else. Right? Who knows where you'll be going? You could be staying, going, you don't know what's going to happen. So if it's actually false in the beginning and you do end up staying home, right, where the second statement is true, this is a true statement. And and the reasoning there, this is a, a tougher one for me as well. It's, it's just that, well, we don't really know what's going to happen, right? If it's if it is snowing, then you may stay home. You may not. We don't know. Um, since we don't know, we can't say this is a false statement. We can't say that this this is wrong. We can only say we don't know, and therefore, if it's not false, then it has to be true. And that's that's my way of explaining. It, although I might be botching it up, we're just saying that we don't know what you do when it's not snowing. We don't have enough information to conclude that whatever the second part here is, is to say that, that this is wrong. And in fact, this extends to a false and then a false. Well, if it's not snowing and you do not stay home, that, that could be true as well, right? We don't know. We don't, this is a, an if-then statement is a statement of implication. If we don't know that the original premise is true. If we don't, if we, if the original premise is not true, if it's false, we don't know what could follow. We only know what does follow when the first statement is true. So when we don't know what should follow from the first statement, then we can't say that that you lied, right? Because it's not snowing outside, and you didn't stay home. Well, that's fine because you never said you wouldn't do that. And here again, it's not snowing out, and you stayed home. That could be true as well. There might be other reasons to stay home. But in this case right here, when it was snowing and you actually did go outside, the second statement is false, well, if that's the case, if you're actually going outside when you said you wouldn't, then your original statement, the one right here, is false. So notice that in a, a truth table with any if-then, so with any P and Q, the only time that the conditional is actually false is when you break your word. In other words, when we start right with a true and end with a false. And that's the P then Q as the conditional statement. True and false. So here in any other scenario, right, that original statement still is okay. You didn't break your word. You only did right here. So generally I know it's a, a cheap mnemonic or way of remembering it. But I say that if you say something, if, then, and the first part happens and you don't follow through, well, then you're breaking your word and your original statement was not true. But if the original premise of your statement never actually happened, how can you say that what follows is correct or not? 
Right, so overall that statement could be true or not, we don't know, because we only know uh, that the second part must follow the first. That's the condition. Alright, hope that helped.